Good morning, gardeners. This morning we are going to talk about squashes. Um, specifically today, spaghetti squashes. Um, you know, this is our first garden here, so we're kind of learning as we're going. But I did want to share a couple of things with you. Um, as you know from our post yesterday, um, that uh, we did get bees. Because we were having some problems pollinating garden, I also learned that honeybees, uh, their favorite flower is not really spaghetti squash flowers. Actually, there's a special squash bee for this, um, which um, I don't think we have. So some bumbles and some other pollinators will sometimes come in. If not, you will have to hand pollinate. So I just wanted to introduce you to the boys and the girls. So here is one of our male flowers and you can see the yellow pollen there. Here we have another male and here is one of our female flowers. You can see she's really voluptuous and sexy. And here we also have another voluptuous, sexy female flower. Um, and so uh, if they don't get pollinated properly, you can see over here, I don't know if this one really is, got pollinated properly, but um, the male and females, they, they do have to get it on. They have to have sex. And they use pollinators to do that. So if you're, there's no pollinators, then there is no food, and thus is our big problem now. So um, you can see with the female flower, I'm going to try and get this camera over here. That is her ovary. So she needs to be fertilized so that ovary can grow into a beautiful yummy spaghetti squash. And so if there are no pollinators, you kind of have to do this yourself. And one way to do this um, is by using a Q-tip and you can go to our manly male flower, um, rub a lot of that beautiful golden sticky pollen on the tip of the Q-tip and then go to our voluptuous sexy female flower and I just kind of rub this all over here. Just trying to stick any pollen that we can um, into her lovely female parts um, so that uh, they have sex and So, so that ovary there can produce fruit. So as you can see, there has been some success. Um, we do have from our first video or second video, that is the spaghetti squash that I showed you last week and it's getting larger. So we do have some natural fertilization going on here. Um, but we also are finding uh, uh, dead, dead ovaries that have not been pollinated. And so I'll show you some examples of those. Um, so 
This is our our yellow squash garden. And you can see there's quite a few yellow squashes and they mostly look these guys look like they have been pollinated but as you can see I have been in the garden early this morning um, take taking care of the plants and harvesting and so we got this beautiful big guy crooked neck yellow squash um, today. This is our first squash. So today we are actually doing our first harvest in the garden. And then from my garbage bucket you can see here that I've removed any leaves that are looking diseased or, or just like icky. Um, there's one like things that are kind of chewed up. Here's some more leaves that were just like, just, you know, chewed and, chewed and, and, you know, possible fungus. Um, any old flowers that look like they were maybe getting mold or mildewed, those, of course, go into the, the garbage pail. And I just want to say that the, the leaves and anything that goes in the garbage pail does not go into the compost. It gets bagged in a compostable, quote unquote, plastic bag and goes into the trash because we don't want to reintroduce any diseases into our beds when we put the compost, um, our black gold, back into the garden next year. And so, I want to show you right in this ugly bucket right here. Um, here are examples of female uh, female flowers that were not pollinated or not um, not pollinated correctly, so or pollinated enough, we can say. Um, as you know, there are um, many seeds in a squash plant and so all of basically all that needs to get pollinated so that we can have a big beautiful squash so if kind of like some of the like these kind of examples are where you know maybe some of these ovaries had been pollinated but not the whole thing you kind of start to get some deformed fruit but um, it never really fully develops um, you know, here are two, these ovaries probably never were pollinated at all. Um, again, one that it was probably partially, partially pollinated and then, um, just kind of didn't get there, wasn't strong enough. And then here we have kind of a weird, um, Siamese twin dealy where the flowers were pretty close together and at some point they they kind of fused and that fruit just got confused and um, kind of um, it kind of looks like um, something also weird was happening here where um, some of the fruit uh, obviously got pollinated partially, but then just not enough. So this is what happens when we don't have pollinators. And um, it's early in the season. There are very few out to begin with. And um, so without them, you don't be discouraged. It, it just means... Um, you need to be a little bit more vigilant and do look to doing uh, a pollination, a manual pollination, so that you have a greater chance of your squashes surviving. Um, here in the south, we have squash borer disease, um, which is another um, big killer of squash plants, but 
I think so far um, our garden, our squashes are thriving and we are, we're really hoping that we get skipped over by the borers. Um, but until then, we'll be hoping that our bees um, find the garden soon and um, doing the manual pollinating of our beautiful flowers. So, um, so happy gardening and stick around for our, our next video.